Hello all, good evening. This is Sachin Kalasadarjan. Today I'm going to use the data mining tool Weka to analyze a credit data set using decision trees. So let me share my screen and get on with it. So the data set which we are going to use today is a German credit data which are like multiple factors which can affect the uh, credit worthiness of a person. So I just opened the data here. So let's go to Weka and load the data set. I have just loaded the data set here. You can see that it has like 1000 instances and like has like 21 attributes. And if you go through attributes, most of them are like uh, categorical in type, nominal. And some of them like age and the amount are like in numeric in type. Our target variable is a class which says whether the applicant is of a good credit or a bad. Here I am going to visualize the data of credit amount versus the age because both of them are like numerical and see like how they fetch in. If you see here the data is like pretty random and the jitter just increases the complexity. Now let us try to create a decision tree based on this data set. I am going to choose the J48 decision tree which is based on C4.5 algorithm and I am going to use a percentage rate of 50-50 basically like 50% of training and 50% of test data. Here is my first run. So you can see like there is a 72.4 accuracy out of the 500 instances which was used. It had a 362 uh, correct and 138 incorrect. And this shows a confusion matrix. So 304 uh, out of the good were really classified as good correctly. But 62 bad were incorrectly classified as good. So if you see here the size of the tree and by the way this is a decision tree. This is how it will look like for each of the conditions. And the number of leaves is 103 and type of the tree is 140, which is like fairly large. This is how we visualize the tree as well. I have just run the decision tree for a bit of 60 percentage, you see right here. And for 70 percentage, 80 and 90. I'm running like using the complete training set, which is equivalent to running 100 percent as well. You compare the uh, accuracy percentages, you can see like 100 percentage in the train set gives me like 85.5 percentage, 90 gives me 74 percentage, 80 gives me 77 percentage, uh, 76 gives me 73.7 and 60 gives me 72.5. If you see my excel sheet here, I can have concluded that my 80 20 split gives me like fair amount of accuracy without too much of overfitting. Now let's see the impact of pruning to our decision tree. I'm using an 80 20 split. And I'm going to change some of the attributes here. I'm going to reduce the confidence factor to 0.1. Less are the confidence factor, smaller the tree is. Now I'm also going to increase the number of instances per leaf as well, which will again further prune the tree. I'm going to make sure that the tree is in fact pruned. So let's see how the run looks like. If you see here, my accuracy rate has grown down to 71, which is still an acceptable value. But my number of leaves and types of tree had gone like drastically down. In fact, if you uh, run an unpruned tree, it goes up to 466 uh, leaves. So let me now try to visualize the tree and see how it looks like. So this is my tree right here. This decision tree diagram right we see here is pretty easy to explain to do my business logic. I can clearly see like the main factors which affect the credit worthiness of my potential client. This is checking account status, duration, credit amount, then the duration of the loan which he wants to do. And this is an easy way to explain and take a business decision for our financial institution as well. Finally, let us see some cost benefit analysis on the last one which you have done. So this area right here gives the true positive rate, the false positive rate, the precision recall, F measure and ROC area. ROC is a receiver operating characteristic and it usually compares the true positive rate with the false positive rate. Here I'm just going to plot the ROC curve for uh, class value of good for the good credit customers. If you see here like X is like false positive and Y is true positive. Ideally the ROC curve should be like as close as to the Y axis than almost following a horizontal path like this. In other words like as close as to the top left corner of the graph. Our graph is not really up to the mark but I can take it. And the area of the ROC curve should be as large as possible, which in this case should be tending towards 1. And finally, thanks for watching.